Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how a typical day as an anesthesiology resident goes while you're on call. In this particular call, I'm on OB call, so I'll be helping out a lot of pregnant patients. I'll be helping out by putting in epidurals, helping out in C-sections, and kind of just managing the floor and managing the patient's epidurals and any pain uh, requests that they have. So in this video, I'm going to also go through what I kind of pack for lunch. So even if you're not in the medical profession and you just kind of live a busy lifestyle, I'll show you what you can quickly do to make sure that you're eating uh, something that's not only nutritious, but packed with micronutrients and that's going to give you some sustained energy throughout the day. Before I make my lunch, you got to make sure to feed these guys. Otherwise, they're going to go crazy throughout the day. I like to pack my lunch before work. This process literally just takes me a couple of minutes. I go ahead and add my mixed greens, which already come pre-packaged. I just go ahead and rinse them off. Now you should buy these organic and you can purchase this from your local grocery store or Costco. And then I'll go ahead and add an avocado, which is rich in omega-3s and B vitamins, especially B6 to give you that extra energy. And I'll add some walnuts for texture. And walnuts are great because they contain vitamin E and L-arginine, which are cardioprotective. And I'll just add any protein source that I like. I like to use three ingredients for my salad dressings. Very simple. The first one's apple cider vinegar. The second is olive oil. And the third is some raw organic honey. It's important that you buy raw or organic honey. That way you avoid any high fructose corn syrup. And it's very simple. You just add a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, drizzle over some olive oil, and add about a teaspoon of honey. You're gonna get a nice sweet and tangy flavor for your salad. All right guys, so before my call shift, I like to go to the gym and do a quick little workout. It gives me a boost of energy, kind of changes my physical state. And it's nothing fancy. It's quick, short, efficient. And I think it's very beneficial for those of you who are, who are pressed for time have a very busy lifestyle, and even for those of you who travel a lot. So if you'd like to see this kind of workout, please drop a comment and let me know, all right? I'll see you in a bit. So OB call, when we come in, we usually come in at <clears throat> 3 p.m. Um, as soon as we come in, the residents that were here in the morning will go ahead and give us checkout and they'll tell us about any patient issues, any pending issues that are going on that we might need to address here in the afternoon, and any epidurals that need placement or anything pending and triage or any sort of pending issues we take care of as the call team. One of the things that we do is we come in, we make sure that the vitals are all adequate and appropriate for patients who have epidurals. Sometimes epidurals can change some of your hemodynamics. Um, so we make sure we check on the vitals periodically to make sure that everyone's nice and stable. Uh, we go over some lectures from time to time. Then you always gotta keep a book while you're on call that you're learning on. Um, and that's about it. So I wanted to go through real quick with one of my colleagues here. Carts that we use to place an epidural. So anytime a patient needs an epidural, we come over here and we have our epidural tray ready. We have some sterile gloves, chloroprep, some syringes, uh, tegaderm, which holds the epidural nice and tight after we've placed it, and then some mass salt, like some uh, adhesive. All right. um, so first thing, is we have uh, the actual epidural needle here. And if you wanna take a look, there's a bunch of hashtags on it. Hashtags, hashtag, not a hashtag. <laughs> These are just pretty much landmarks that tell you how deep inside um, the patient's back you're in. So it kind of tells you how far the epidural space is in and um, how much you need to thread your catheter afterwards. So we'll place that here. And of course, right now, nothing sterile. This is a test kit. Everything we do is sterile. Once you're inside the epidural space, through time, you kind of get a feel of the loss of that space. So we use this, this is very important. We have some sterile saline here as well. That goes in our nice little side tray here. Um, we have a couple of syringes. We can drop local anesthetic 
to make sure that the patient doesn't feel any pain while you're putting this uh, needle inside. Um, and then you'll place your catheter in, then you'll have an infusion going throughout, uh, throughout the patient's epidural space so they get a nice anesthetic level where they can have adequate pain relief. Otherwise, it's our little hangout spot. When we're not in our workroom, we like to go and check and make sure that the operating rooms are nice and set up. Um, here's a couple of the ORs that we use. Here we got our anesthesia machine over on the right. We keep all of our drugs that we would use for general anesthesia. We have our anesthesia circuit here that would help us convert to general anesthesia. We have a bunch of pediatric supplies in the back to help with any sort of emergencies with the neonate. And this, that's our OR. So we do all of our C-sections back here. Any emergent cases, be it in the middle of the night or early in the morning, um, we take them right back to the operating room and complete them right here. Here's an example of something I do throughout the night. So I was just browsing through triage and I ran across a patient who uh, possibly may need a C-section in the middle of the night. Now, what you first do is you look at their past medical history, their surgical history, any social history, whether they're using alcohol, illicit drugs, or tobacco. You make sure that they're not allergic, allergic to anything. Um, it's important to see when's the last time they ate or drank to see if you may need to convert to general anesthesia and that will also change your anesthetic management as well. And in C-sections, the mother is usually prone to losing about a liter of blood. Um, so sometimes if these patients already come in anemic or if they have some sort of blood disorder um, predisposing them to additional bleeding, um, then you may need to think about having some blood available in the room or calling the blood bank. So it's really important that you make sure you do a thorough history and physical on each patient to make sure that you ensure they're very safe in the operating room. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.